Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem longest happy string. A string S is defined as being happy if it follows, uh, if it satisfies the following conditions. It has to be made up of only A, B, and C characters. It cannot contain three consecutive A's, three consecutive B's, or C's. And it can have at most uh, a certain number of A's, a certain number of B's, and a certain number of C's, and those parameters actually are given to us in the input of this function. So basically we're given three integers representing those counts, and we want to return the longest possible happy string that we can build. We're not given any string, we actually have to build that ourselves and then return it the longest possible that we can make, and there could be multiple happy strings that actually satisfy these conditions that are of the same maximum length. And then if that's the case, we can return any of them. We don't have to build a certain one. Uh, if it's not possible to do that, to even build any string, then we can just return an empty string. And the first example is actually really helpful to un even understand this problem. So we're given one A, one B, and one or seven C's. We don't have to use all of these characters, but these are the characters we're given. What's the longest possible string that we can build using these? That satisfies uh, these conditions. Now, the real condition here is that we can't have three consecutive A's, B's, or C's, right? That's gonna be the hard part. Now, which uh, character should we start with? We could start with a lowercase a, uh, or a lowercase b, but I think it's somewhat obvious that we probably want to be greedy here, right? If we have a bunch of sevens, we should try to use these first rather than starting with the characters we have few of, because remember, we can only have two consecutive c's. So if we have a c and a c, we can't, you know, we might not even be able to use all of these. So we really need to save these a and b's to use them as like the in-between, right? To reset it. So if we put an A here, then we can use two more C's. And even after we use four C's now, right? We're down to three C's. We have no A's. So we still want to use as many C's as we can, uh, but we have to reset it. So we have to put a B in between and then we're out of B's. So now let's put two more C's, C, C. Uh, then we're left with a single C, uh, but we can't use that C anymore. This is the longest string we could do. Uh, is there a way that we could have rearranged this to make it even better? Well, intuitively, this is simple enough to see that we probably can't, right? We, we did as much as we could. We put gaps where we could. We maximized the number of Cs, and uh, we were only able to use six of the Cs. But that's still pretty good. That's the longest string we could have made. Now, of course, the A and the B could have been swapped, right? And it would have still been the same length. And we could return that other string as well, where A and B are swapped. It doesn't really matter which one we return. This is the longest that we could build. And that's how we're going to do it. Now, it's easy to overcomplicate the solution of this problem, and that's actually the track that I went on when I first tried to solve it, but it's actually more simple than you might think. What we just went through is pretty much the solution, where what we're going to do is we're going to always look at the most common character uh, of the ones that we have right now, and of course, it's C, so we're going to start with a C in our output. So just to clean it up, let's do it on the right side over here. Okay, so we used a C, now we're left with six Cs. Now what do we do? Well, once again, let's look at which character is the most common. Again, it's C. So what we're gonna do, put another C here. Now we're left with five. Uh, what are we gonna do? Same exact thing. C is the most common, so we're gonna put another C. But wait a minute, if we do that, we're gonna have three consecutive Cs. We can't do that. So we're gonna say, well, even though C is the most common, we can't put a, a C here, right? We have to at least wait to put another character here. So even though we know it's the most common, let's find now the second most common character. It could be either A or B. Let's just do A, uh, and then we'll be left with zero A's. So let's just cross A out. So we put a single A, and then we continue our algorithm, right? Now let's again find the most common character. It's C. Uh, now we can put a C here because we're going to look at the two previous characters. Before the two previous characters were both C. That means we can't insert a new C. But now the two previous characters are C and A. So they're not both C, so we can add another C. So if we do that, we're left with four Cs. Now again, C is the most common, so we uh, insert another C here. And now again, C is the most common, but we see that the two previous characters are C, so we can't do that. So we're gonna insert the second most common. The only other character here is B, so uh, we put the B here. And then again, the, most, the only character left now is C, so we're gonna add it uh, once, 
add it twice, but we can't add it the last time because the two previous characters are C. And what we're gonna say now is, okay, well, what's the second most common? Well, there are no other characters. So we can't insert a C and we don't have any other characters. So basically we pretty much ran out of characters. So this is the longest we could do. And this is what we're gonna return. Otherwise, if we were able to add this last C, then we would also stop because now we don't even have any characters left to continue building the string. So in either case, we're gonna stop like that. So that's pretty much the algorithm actually. But the question is how are we going to continuously find the minimum from the three characters that we had? Well, we could actually do it a simple way. We could literally just use a list. It's only three values, right? Like even if we had to sort it every single time, sorting a list of three isn't gonna be very much. Three values is practically big O of one, right? It's a constant time operation no matter what since the size is only three. But if we wanna be more efficient, we could use a heap and that's how I'm gonna do it just because, you know, what if we had the exact same problem, but instead of given three characters, we were given 10 or 20 or 100 or even a variable amount, then the heap is the technically better solution. But, you know, using a heap, adding and popping values from a heap, especially if the heap is of size three, is going to always be an O of one operation anyway. Uh, but if, you know, we had N input values, then the operation would be log N. That's why we're using heaps because they're very efficient to find minimum and maximum values. But in this case, it doesn't really make a difference. But the overall time complexity, so in this case, if we take each value, push it to the heap, pop it from the heap, uh, that's of size three each time it's gonna be an O of one operation But if we do it for every uh, character that we're given right in this case The characters that we're given is basically the sum of all of these which is let's say n the overall time complexity is going to be big O of n pretty much I guess the space complexity is going to be big O of one unless you're counting the uh, output string as extra memory so now let's code it up let's code it up and we're going to first initialize our results and initialize our max heap because we always want to find the most common character the result is going to be an empty string so far the max heap is going to be an empty list because what we want to do to the max heap is go through every single uh, character uh, and its account pair. So in this case, so we have A, B, and C. Now, and the first value is the count, the second value is the character itself. Now, the reason we have a negative here is Python doesn't have max heaps by default, but we can get around that by using negative values because by default, it'll be a min heap. But if we're popping a value and we're getting the minimum and the negative count is the minimum, then we're actually getting the most common character by getting the negative count. Uh, and the reason we're even iterating through this and rather than just initializing the heap like this is because of one little edge case, which is what if the count is equal to zero? Then we don't want to add it to our heap. So if we have zero A's, we don't wanna add that to the heap. But if it's not zero, so uh, in this case, if it's not zero, then we do wanna add it to the heap. Then we'd say heap Q dot heap push uh, to the max heap, the pair of values count and the character. Let's move that to the next line. So the reason we don't wanna add one of the characters if it has a count of zero to the max heap is pretty much our solution that follows will kind of not work out and it would just be a little bit more annoying to implement it like that because we're gonna assume that anything that's on the max heap has a positive number of characters. So if we add one that doesn't have any characters, that's gonna kind of screw up the rest of our solution. So now we're gonna iterate while the max heap is non-empty, basically it means that we do still have characters left. We're going to always pop from the max heap. The first value is the count, the second is the character. We're gonna do heap Q dot heap pop from the max heap. Of course, what we wanna do is now push this or add this character to the solution and then decrement the count by one. But what if the two previous characters were the same? So we have to check that. So we're gonna have an if uh, statement. So basically, first we have to make sure that the length of the result is greater than one, meaning it's at least two values, and that the previous two values, we can get the previous value in Python by taking negative one index, uh, and the second, uh, the second most recent value by taking the negative two index. And if those are equal to the current character, yeah, it's kind of cool in Python, you can literally have a uh, chained equals, but if these are all equal to each other, that means that this character was already added to previous times. So now we're gonna wanna pop the second most frequent character. But what if the second most frequent character doesn't exist? So basically, if the max heap is empty, 
then, well, we can't really do anything, right? We have to return. Or in this case, to make it a little bit cleaner, I'm just gonna break out of the while loop. And then at the outside over here is where I'm actually gonna return the result. That's if we don't have the second most common character. But if we do have the second most common character, we're gonna get that. So let's get count to char to uh, from second heap q dot heap pop from our max heap. And of course, we're gonna add this character to the result, it's the second most common character, and then we're gonna decrement the count by one. But remember, the count in this case is actually negative, right? We added it as a negative value, so instead of decrementing it, we're actually gonna increment it by one until it's equal to zero. Now, the question is, do we still have any occurrences of this character left? If we do, we should push it back to the heap. If we don't, then we don't push it back to the heap. So we're gonna say if uh, count two is non-zero, then we're gonna do heap Q dot heap push to the max heap uh, this new pair of values which is count to and the uh, character so the only thing that we updated was the count to this if statement was basically we couldn't add the most common character in the opposite case where we can add the most common character we're going to do exactly that we're going to uh, to our result we're going to uh, add that character we're going to increment its count by one instead of you know, decrementing it. And we're also gonna wanna uh, push it to the heap, right? Heap Q dot heap push. Uh, but we don't wanna push it unless the count is non-zero, right? But also, do we wanna push it in this else case? We should probably do that outside of the else case because we popped the value and we definitely wanna add it back. We didn't add it back here and uh, we basically want to add it back regardless of which of these if else executes. So let's add it out here. So basically, if the count is non zero, then we're going to do heap q dot heap push uh, to the max heap this pair of values count and char. So what's either going to happen is we're going to uh, go through uh, these add as many, you know, we're being greedy here, we're adding the most common characters uh, first, and we're trying to add as many as we can. Either what's gonna happen is, we're gonna add all the characters we possibly have to the point that our max heap becomes empty. It'll become empty because the count of every character will have reached zero, and then we won't be pushing them back onto the heap. So then our heap will be empty, and we're gonna end up returning out here or we're not able to use every character, but at the same time, we only have a single character left now, right? We, we have the most common character, but we don't have any secondary characters, so we can't add any more characters. So then we break here, and then we uh, return outside of the loop anyway. So that's the entire code. Let's make sure that it works by running it. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does, and it's pretty efficient, so I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.